Guys, what's going on? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're going to talk about the Razer Barracuda X wireless gaming headset. This is a $100 gaming headset available in black, white, or a nice soft uh, pink color. Well, obviously, we got the black. So this was not sent to me for review. I purchased this as I have other uh, Razer products recently. Uh, I haven't been able to work with them in the past, so hopefully that changes one day, but they've been making some cool stuff, and I wanted to cover it to see how it compares against other models we've covered in the channel in the past. Uh, one thing I noticed, I don't know what it is, Razer boxes hate to stay closed. This is the second Razer box I've owned where I open it, and once you do that, even if you close it perfectly, look at that, it just drives me nuts. As a box person, uh, having something that doesn't close annoys me, so not a little masking tape won't fix. But anyway, I, uh, I really like this product, and this review might be a little bit different than the no normal format, um, this one's kind of exciting me in the $100 price range. So recently I covered the HyperX uh, uh, Cloud Core uh, wireless, also a $100 headset. Now I can be straight up and honest, I think the HyperX Cloud Core wireless has slightly better sound quality. Um, it's a little bit more open and detailed and it works better for music. However, in almost every other way, I like this one more. So this still sounds good. Um, I like a lot of things about it, but it's not uh, class leading sound purely on that price point alone. So, however, that's the only negative thing I can say about this and you're gonna learn that there's actually a lot I really like about the headset. So I'm just trying to keep it honest and open with you guys. So one of the first things that caught my eye was the connectivity capability. So it comes with this little uh, USB-C wireless transmitter. It says it's a four in one device. What that means is it works on Windows, it works on PlayStation, works on your PC if you have a USB-C port and it works with any Android device with a USB-C port. So uh, it really is multifunction. I've tried it with all of those and it worked excellent. No signal cutouts or drops or anything like that. And then my favorite thing about it is it has a fallback to an aux port, which it comes with the aux cable. It actually comes with a few cables. And this is, so just to sum up everything you're about to see in this review, uh, this headset is unoffensive in every way. It's, the, it's at $100, it look, looks like they really, really respected the gamer and who or what you want from a headset at this price range. They didn't cut corners in any way that it felt like. So um, it's not like you get a one foot cable. It's like, oh great, it came with a charge cable that's this long, or your head stuck to the desk or you have to buy your own cable. It came with long cables to charge and use the headset. I love that. So um, basically this is a five meter or five foot USB-A to USB-C cable. This will charge the headset. I'm pleased to say that the headset does work while being charged. Now the USB-C cable does not transmit sound. It does not work as a USB-C headset. You always have to use the wireless transmitter or the aux cable, but it is nice that not only does it work while it's uh, being charged, but the cable that they give you is long enough to use it as such, whereas uh, most companies don't. So, and it even comes with this nice little rubber uh, wrap around it uh, to tighten up the cable. So again, at $100, you're getting some uh, somewhat premium packaging and uh, not necessarily in the box itself, but things that are included. You also get a five foot long USB-A to USB-C extension cable. Now, I love this because um, the transmitter, so I've had this issue with the Steel Series uh, transmitter before too. Basically, when you get a design like this, and this is smaller than the Steel Series one, the Steel Series is roughly 50% larger than this. Um, but when you have this plugged into the front of a PlayStation, for example, it blocks the USB A port. When you plug it in on a laptop, typically it's going to block the port next to it. In a lot of cases, that's fine. Most people have more than one port to, to use, but it's just something to note. Um, by using this little extension cable, even if you leave it tied like this and just plug it in to the end here, just having that hanging off still lets you use the adjacent port. So it's nice that you get this cable. That's basically what it's for. The other nice thing is depending on where your console or computer or whatever device you're using is located, this may help you put the transmitter in a more optimal location, thus improving wireless stability. This transmitter has been rock solid. Um, I only had one little micro stutter, uh, if you will, on the wireless signal. And that was because I tried doing a battery uh, test. I drained it as much as I could and the battery was nearly dead. It beeped telling me it was dying, and as a result, the audio got a little choppy at that one moment, but then I still got another hour of play after that without any audio pop issues uh, whatsoever. So the wireless transmitter, excellent, not only in close range, but long range as well. Now they also include approximately a four foot long TRRS cable, or aux cable, depending on who you're talking to, but basically, this is a four pole 
aux cable, non-proprietary. There's no custom recessing happening or any weird stuff going on. So you can use the uh, right angle on the headphone or the controller or device that you're using and the straight end again on either side. I actually like this because on some controllers, especially when you deal with paddles on the back of controllers, um, the angle one sometimes puts the cable where your fingers and index finger or ring fingers go. So if that drives you crazy, just flip it and do the straight edge at the bottom of your controller and you're good to go. Uh, again, the rubber ties, gold plating. This is a $100 headset that's giving you everything you need to use the headset to its potential. And so as far as like bundling goes and what you get out of the box, this really works with everything. And I, I really want to commend Razer on giving you a complete package and not making you feel like at $100 you're getting short change or getting a budget headset. They did an awesome job there. Now the good news continues with the headset itself because um, it's built really well and it's extremely comfortable. So this is an all matte black plastic construction. There's no fancy stuff, there's no RGB, There's even the logo's subtle, but it looks really, really nice. Uh, you actually get metal on the headband. Again, this is a $100 headset, so getting real metal and not plastic everywhere is awesome. Now, it says they rotate. The ear cups do rotate. However, they rotate up. Um, I usually like to have mine rotate down. They do rotate downward, but not full 180. Um, so it's up like this, and then partly down. Honestly, this one's a little bit tight with the way these ear cups are designed. Because the yoke is offset, you can see how this side is, is bigger than this side. When you rotate them up, it tends to put even more pressure on your neck because the skinny side's here. Whereas the headsets that let you rotate this way tend to have a bigger opening. It's more comfortable around your neck. So you can actually still wear it like this, but for people who like to flip it flat, that's the only thing I wasn't crazy about. It does have a detachable mic. So if you want to use these as wireless headphones or wired headphones on the go, you can do that. Um, the microphone quality, by the way, this boom, the rubber on it, super, super flexible. Um, it holds its place no problem. Honestly, they, they really dialed in the, the microphone boom really, really, really well. And then look at that foam mitt on it. This is gonna help with plosives. So if you tend to have loud peas or tend to put the mic close to your mouth, your friends will appreciate that. Going on to the controls, you have a hard switch for your mic mute, this little toggle button right here. You have your volume rocker, which is a hard stop. This is the minimum, that'll be full blast. If you adjust your windows volume independently of this, now you technically have two volume controls. So if your volume's a little quiet, make sure your windows volume is either maxed out or turned up, and then you can adjust this accordingly. You get a uh, power button that doubles as a mode button. Um, this is the first time I've seen this in the $100 price range. Basically, you turn on the headset, and once it's connected to Windows, if you are listening to a track, like let's say on Tidal or Amazon, you can tap it, and it will pause the track on the computer. Double tap skips forward, triple tap goes back a track. And if you tend to take calls a lot during the day, a single tap will answer a call if it's connected to Windows on something like Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Then, of course, you have the aux input uh, and the USB-C port. This, this again, I said this before, not offensive in every way. They give you the good cables. The design is extremely subtle. The ergonomics and controls are great. I wish it rotated this way. That was probably the only nitpick as far as ergonomics go, but you get great tilt. Clamp force is medium. And this is one of the lightest headsets I've reviewed in this price range at only 250 grams. Very easy to adjust. The clicks are nice and solid. Um, it has a great seal. And it even though these have the uh, athletic fabric material, there is still very good noise isolation on this, which means that ambient noise in the background won't leak in through the ear cups. It does a good job at blocking outside sounds. Now, as far as comfort goes, you have a pleather top here. Let's see if I can get that in focus. So this is all pleather, but it is padded all the way around. So being padded all the way around is noticeable. You do feel it. Not quite as comfortable as that $100 SteelSeries Arctis Prime um, that has the ski band goggle thing, whatever. Um, but this is still extremely comfortable. And with the lightweight and medium clamp force, uh, the headphone stays in place. One thing I really like is it's actually very easy to adjust. They're nice soft rotation, soft tilt, meaning that when you put it on, the headphone or headset is adjusting itself uh, to make a good fit and finish. It's not like you have to constantly do this to make sure the ear cups feel right. Ear cups are oval shaped. It's about, uh, I think it was an inch and a half by two and a quarter. So let's double check that. Yeah, I was right, inch and a half by two and a quarter and roughly three quarter inch deep. These are memory foam ear pads. Um, excellent, excellent ear pads. Again, 
I, I haven't found anything where I felt like they had to cut corners to make it $100. The microphone pickup quality, let's just get right into the mic test. This is a hypercardioid mic, which means it rejects noise behind the mic and to the sides. It's designed to pick up primarily from the front and reject everything else. That's excellent in the budget range because um, the, this doesn't have fancy noise cancellation software. Um, so it, it's good if you live in a or work or play in a noisier environment. Now typically the one downside to hypercardioid mics is they don't sound as clear or open as some other uh, microphones that are called omnidirectional. Corsair likes to use omnidirectional and then use software to adjust uh, noise filtration. So they can have good mics, but the, at the same time they pick up more background noise. This mic, considering it's hypercardioid, blows almost everything away in this price range that I've heard, including the HyperX Cloud Core uh, wireless that I just reviewed. So let's get into the mic test now. I want you to hear it because it sounds phenomenal. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Razer Barracuda X mic wirelessly. I'm not doing any fancy stuff with the sound, as you can tell if you can see in the background. That's just Windows Voice Recorder. I don't like to use Audacity or, or Adobe Audition or anything like that because I don't. most people aren't going to be streaming or recording with those programs on a $100 wireless headset, and YouTube's not going to do it any favors when I upload it anyway. So this is uncorrected, pure sound, and I think it sounds phenomenal. It has a good balance of warmth a good balance of background noise rejection, yet I still get the clarity and detail in my voice. So if you're looking for arguably, in my opinion, one of the best sounding wireless headsets under $100 that just balances noise rejection, tone and clarity, uh, this this is just phenomenal. I love this microphone. Okay, so that's the microphone. If you've, uh, sometimes I overlay other uh, mic tests in this price range. I can tell you that this, uh, what I just explained with the warmth and tone and clarity, this is to me one of the best it gets. The HyperX in comparison, even though it's slightly better on sound quality, microphone quality is certainly lacking a bit. Um, it sounds more like your traditional gaming headset walkie talkie, lacking a lot of detail. Now, I got into sound quality with this in the past, uh, or in the beginning, very briefly. Just because the HyperX Cloud Core Flight, or Cloud Core Wireless, sounds a little bit better, it doesn't, this doesn't sound bad. I actually found that in some games, I absolutely love the sound profile. Uh, when I was playing the Ascent on this, because of the deeper bass, um, this has a more immersive uh, soundstage in the bass department. It's nice and deep, it's rich. Uh, but it's not sloppy at all. There's no, you don't hear the the drivers in here working too hard to produce that bass, which a lot of uh, sub hundred fifty dollar headsets. As soon as you crank the bass, it's almost like you can hear chafing or some wind noise inside because the driver is pushing too much air through the baffle. It has no baffle. There's a lot of weird things that um, can attribute to poor sound quality, which is not the case here. It's very very control. Um, this is a more relaxed soundstage. It's not as open as some other gaming headsets. So if you want a really wide open soundstage purely for competitive gaming, um, spend a little bit more. Uh, the Cloud Core, I think, is a little bit closer to what most people look for on the on the openness. However, the tuning they, dis is, uh, they did for this is kind of magical when it comes to gaming because even though I like the Cloud Core wireless, that's a hard thing to keep saying, more for music, I really, really loved playing on these for games because somehow the positional awareness and detail was all still there, yet it wasn't fatiguing in the slightest way because the sound is a little bit more relaxed. It's smoother. Just like the design is smooth and relaxed and unoffensive, the sound is smooth and relaxed and unoffensive. It's, it's really incredible how they got simple controls. There's no extra software you need. They got a really simple, clean design. Everything feels great, no rattles. I mean, look at that. It doesn't do anything. Um, so you got your mic, your comfort, your design, and then the sound quality fits the same mantra they were doing with everything else. So uh, I found on the music side, I think that exposes their biggest weakness in sound, and uh, which is mainly in the mid-range. The bass kind of crosses over a little bit into the mid-range, which can add some muddiness to it, but it's not bad. It's not like what the Razer Krakens were, which to me, I have those two. Those don't sound that great. Um, it's it's too much bass and they lack the clarity and detail that a gaming headset should have. This doesn't have that problem. Now this doesn't sound as good as the Razer Black Shark V2. So if you don't need wireless, you just want a sub hundred dollar high quality headset, best sound you can get. Black Shark V2, phenomenal. This just gives you great sound and everything else great in a wireless package at a comparable price point. So um, yeah, I played Call of Duty on it. I was playing Forza. I was playing the Ascent. 
that new underground digging game on PlayStation. I always forget that name. It drives me crazy uh, that I can't remember it. But it was okay on that. It didn't really do much for the game. But on the Ascent and Ratchet and Clank, oh my god, these things are amazing. So um, that that about covers it, guys. Uh, I, I really, really love this headphone. And I think that what I love about headphones like these, the $100 price range actually excites me more than some of the more expensive price ranges because... The average consumer isn't spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on headphones. Let's be real. Some people can't spend more than 50 and that is what it is. So um, I wanted to find what what can you get out there that's great value even in the sub $100 price range that doesn't make you feel like you're getting ripped off. And that's such an important thing to me, especially when I'm making recommendation to friends and family. This is easily a, a top choice for me because it rounds off everything so well. Build quality, the comfort's phenomenal. The battery life, by the way, I didn't touch on this earlier. I really should have. So hopefully you're still around. It's rated for 20 hours. I was able to hit that no problem. I think I must have hit like 23 to 24 hours on this on a full charge. Because even after I passed the 20 hour mark, I played a bit longer. Then I got the dead battery beep. It warns you when the battery is getting low. Um, you can still play. But I played for over an hour after the, the battery warning beep happened. And it never died. Um, it just kept on going. So it's really easy to hit the 20 hours on this, no problem. And with the extreme comfort it has, um, I can't see anyone that buys this headphone or headset being disappointed with what they purchased. It, they really, there's no serious flaw in any way whatsoever. Uh, I love, love this headphone under 100 bucks. And it's cool that they have different color choices too, between the black, white, and pink. So. I hope you found this review helpful. Again, I try to be as honest as I can with my reviews um, because, you know, I respect the gaming community and I hope they uh, appreciate the openness. So anyway, thank you guys so much for the support. I'll put a link in the comments uh, or in the description below in case you want to purchase these. If it's available on Amazon, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in there. That helps support the channel because I use the channel money to buy more headsets like this. Um, but if not, buy it wherever you want. I know it goes on sale at Best Buy and Amazon from time to time. So keep your eyes out. Thank you as always so much for the support. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to be covering more and more headsets. I got the, the new Black Shark V2 Pro that I'm looking forward to covering. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.